Hey guys, how's it going? It's Abit Eric. Welcome back to the channel. So I've already been asked this a million times since yesterday. Abit Eric, did you see the Mortal Kombat movie? And I have to say yes, I did. I went with some friends. We saw it at a local movie chain. I do have HBO Max, and I was able to watch it on that. I've seen it twice, um, and I have some thoughts. People keep asking me in my live streams, "Can I share my thoughts?" And I'm always like, "Well, I'm gonna make a video about it." And I would rather you guys watch the video than me give away the content during my live streams. So here are my thoughts on the Mortal Kombat movie. So this movie was anticipated for me uh, i remember seeing the first two mortal kombat in the movie theaters i also had a special mortal kombat cartoon vhs tape called the conquest begins it was freaking terrible but i was a mortal kombat fanatic growing up it came out right when i was in third grade so the prime of the mortal kombat years mortal kombat one two and three i was like third fourth and fifth grade or so so i was there when the mortal monday started i was there with the hype i practically grew up with mortal kombat to this day i still love and appreciate the series i think 11 is a fantastic game so going into this movie i had some pretty high expectations now just to clarify my thoughts on the original two movies i thought the first one was great i loved it the soundtrack was amazing um the characters were great i think the casting was perfect oh sonia blade with um what's her name bridget wilson as sonia blade oh man and then robin shu and i believe lyndon ashby were the two other main characters i thought the person that played kano was great the character of that the actor that played shang sung was great casting in the first movie was great now annihilation came out when i was like in seventh grade so a couple years after the first movie came out and I got to say, I was disappointed in that one. I thought that movie was garbage. Sure, it featured some of the cool characters and stuff like that, but it just did not compare. So going into this one, I was a little worried. Um, I did see one trailer, the trailer that I reacted to on this channel. But other than that, I tried to keep it completely blind. I didn't read any articles or anything like that. Uh, but I was slightly spoiled by somebody in my chat. They know who they are. Because they got into a debate over the character in this movie. The main character's name is Cole Young. And he's a character that was developed especially for this movie. Now, if you don't want to be spoiled for the Mortal Kombat movie, this is your spoiler warning right now. Feel free to exit out of this video and go leave your like first, goddammit, and subscribe. But go watch the movie first. Come back. Okay? I'm going to give you five seconds. Spoiler warning. Because there's always some dumbass no spoilers man there you got five seconds starting now to leave to not be spoiled five four three two one all right so cole young is a character that was developed for this movie in my live chat there was a debate about who cole young was and somebody kept insisting that they were a an a um i guess a part of the bloodline of scorpion who was killed in the beginning of this movie and they were 110 percent right i don't know if they read leaks or anything like that but that was not cool i have a no spoiler rule in my chat and i warned you i remember warning you a couple times hey cut it i don't want to hear anything about it and this person was just adamant about letting everybody know that this cole young guy is going to be a descendant of scorpion well he turned out to be exactly correct so the movie kind of focuses on the rivalry from sub-zero and scorpion and it all stems from sub-zero Sub -Zero killing hanzo who becomes scorpion eventually at the beginning of the movie um he tracks him down kills his whole entire family except one the baby and uh that's how the premise starts it's almost like a kung fu samurai movie where it's almost like ghost of Tsushima. if you think about it everybody gets killed um and the evil villain takes off while a baby gets protected and is hidden safe and then the bloodlines continue on from there so then it opens up we get cole young that we're introduced to who's a cage fighter basically a punching bag as he's described in this and he has a wife and a daughter uh out of nowhere sub-zero shows up and begins attacking him because he's marked you have a mark of the mortal combat dragon that tells you that you're one of the chosen fighters to participate in mortal combat for whatever uh, i guess every century or whatever there's a mortal combat fight there was nine already that have happened or eight um, but this next one was going to decide the fate to the world. If the Outworld Realm wins more combat, 
they conquer the entire universe and all the different realms, right? So basically the same premise, but the idea is this time the fighters for Earth are chosen because they have a brand. Now this brand can transfer if you get killed or if you kill somebody that has the brand. So let's say somebody kills somebody else and that person has the brand, you become the chosen one for that tournament. And this plays in later on it. Now, this movie did play pretty quickly. Um, it was quick, action-packed right away. Um, there was a lot of quick fighting scenes, but it was mostly like a chase where Cole Young was being hunted down by Sub-Zero and Shang Tsung was adamant about killing this guy because he's the heir to the bloodline of Scorpion. So everything kind of fell on Scorpion. They didn't want Scorpion's bloodline to win because it was the threat against the Outworld. So, so Scorpion is kind of like the main uh focus his history his family which is different compared to the original mortal Kombat, which focused on Liu kang it's different um you know we we never really saw this big rivalry rivalry between sub-zero and scorpion really pushed as heavy as we did with this movie and i thought it was kind of refreshing and it changed things up and i didn't mind that not to mention the two people that were casted as scorpion and sub-zero did really good in their fight scenes so really good with that now basically they're hunted down they go and uh he, he jacks finds him they run away Jax gets attacks explains you know his arms and everything like that he goes to sonia's house and from there she informs him about how mortal Kombat operates and stuff like that and that they gotta go find raiden's temple kano is held captive by her and i gotta say if there was anybody that stole the show in this movie it was kano I don't know the actor's name, but he was perfect. At times, maybe a little too much. Like, he had to have the last say in every single line. He brought that Marvel Comics, you know, the MCU humor to the things. Like, he was just really on target with some witty one-liners and stuff. And um, I thought he was pretty good. He was probably the best part. In fact, there was a lot more Kano in this movie than the original Mortal Kombat. So, that's a plus. But, there was way less... Sonya Blade, way less Jax, and way less Liu Kang than the other movies. In fact, Liu Kang is more of a secondary character that gets introduced in the middle of the movie. Uh, he's kind of the person that's responsible for training Cole Young to find what is called your Arcana. So your Arcana is like your special power or your ability to like shoot projectiles or whatever power you have. Your special ability, your special move for Mortal Kombat. Um, so Kung Lao and Liu Kang are responsible for teaching Earth's defenders, which at this point in the movie is um, Jax, Cole Young, Liu Kang, Kung Lao and kano kano is actually one of the chosen ones because he has a brand uh so a good chunk of the movie after they go to raiden's temple is spent training and i gotta admit and i gotta tell you guys it kind of slows down a little bit too much here with the training aspect and it kind of kills the solid momentum that the movie had going for it i get what they were trying to do um but at, at times it also seemed like there was too many characters and I feel that Annihilation actually suffered from the same um, from the same problem where they had all these Mortal Kombat characters that they had to toss in and there wasn't enough screen time. Um, but the focus on the main characters uh, for the most part was Cole Young uh, and Liu Kang and Jax and Sonya. Those are the ones that were focused on quite a bit more than anybody else. Kung Lao, he dies pretty quickly and i think that's what sets Liu kang off to uh becoming stronger but anyways I'm, I'm not trying to give a plot summary the plot was kind of um okay up until they got to this training session where it just kind of took too long cole young kind of lost faith in himself missed his family he went back and shang Tsung readies up the armies because shang Tsung is trying to kill them ahead of time and steal their souls raiden puts like a preventive barrier over his temple and somehow cabal convinces kano to betray the good guys and it begins this big battle where they're all fighting kung lao gets killed by shang Tsung. uh goro attacks cole young but dies because cole young finds his arcana which is basically like he gets like armor and some uh Tumfa's Tumfa blades and he's able to like absorb 
I guess, damage, kind of like Black Panther. Um, he ends up being teleported to an area where Sub-Zero is with his family captured, and it leads to this big reveal where Scorpion comes back from hell. They get into this big battle. They kill Sub-Zero. Literally all of Shang Tsung's henchmen, Melina, Sub-Zero, Goro, Cabal, and um, a couple other characters that escape my name get killed by Earth's defenders, and then they come up with a plan to uh, expand the team. Cole Young leaves and says he's going to Hollywood and it leaves a tease for Johnny Cage at the end. And that's it. So there was actually no Mortal Kombat tournament. The whole movie was kind of like a premise. And I got to say, it was okay. Uh, there's some people out there who are saying this game, this movie was fantastic. Uh, I would say it, it was about 75% good. Um, the whole opening part, the lead up, the chase till they get to Raiden's temple and then right there just kind of like stagnates for a little bit and then it goes really quick but by the time the movie was over I'm like wow what really happened it was just you know they were chasing Cole Young he found out who he was uh he got his ability a whole bunch of the bad guys died and now the movie's over and I was just kind of left not not excited that they teased a sequel I really wish Johnny Cage was in it I don't know why they teased that why they they left him out and left him for a sequel but that's fine i really wish i wasn't spoiled i think that's most of the the problem there is that my live chat spoiled it somebody in my chat was going on and on and on about cole young being scorpion's descendant and it kind of ruined the movie for me um i would say if i was to give it an 8 out of 10 i would say this was a solid 7.5 i prefer the original 1995 mortal Kombat movie still out of the three that have been made this one was much better than Annihilation. It wasn't bad. I've seen it twice, but um, it just seemed like there wasn't enough. There was too many characters that were popping in that died off really quickly, and I really didn't give a shit that they died, if that made sense. Like, Kung Lao dying didn't really have the impact that it should have because he was just he literally didn't have that much time he was being touted as the best fighter out of the group and that if he died earth's hope would be gone but it was just kind of like i don't know um kano was great i think they casted everybody pretty good for the most part but you just didn't see enough of these guys i don't know if maybe in the sequel some of these villains come back to life we see goro again maybe kano again and who knows um and and i would like to see where they're going to take the sequel at and how long between now and the sequel is it going to be two years are they planning on doing these like fast and furious franchise where it seems like we get one like every year or two and we're going to have like nine mortal Kombat movies or what like i don't know what's going on with it um i think for what it was for a nice reboot of the series it did its job setting the stage i just wish we would have seen an actual tournament be thrown in there and not so much of the hey, we're at Raiden's Temple and we're training and learning how to do fireballs and stuff and then everybody gets betrayed and they kill the bad guys and then the movie's over. Uh, I was expecting a little bit more, but I'm not disappointed, if that makes any sense, because my expectations, while I had wanted good things for this, they weren't like where I absolutely hated it. I, I would go out and see the sequel again for sure. Uh, I just think... Man, you know, it could have been so much better, but I like what they did with the whole Scorpion and Sub-Zero being the main focus of the plot line with Cole Young. Um, I like that Sonya Blade became a defender by killing Kano, so now she's ready to be in the tournament next round. Uh, they did a good job with Jax and his whole build-up with his arms and everything like that. Um, Liu Kang, I guess he's going to have a bigger role in the second movie. He was kind of thrown in there last, you know, the halfway point of this one. I guess Kung Lao is going to be his driving force. Um, and I like what they did with Scorpion, uh, bringing him back. But um, I feel I feel that the characters in the original movie were just more um, well-developed. They had a lot more charm and personality. Like Sonya and Liu Kang and Johnny Cage in the first movie were fantastic. Um, this Kano in the new one was better than the original one. So if that original one would have been in the 1995 Mortal Kombat would have been sold on that i mean they even had goro in the first movie a lot longer than they did in this one i feel that they killed goro off way too easily he should have been alive still there was no katana um i guess she'll be in the sequel that probably will go to the outworld 
because uh, she's in the outworld. She's a princess. Uh, so, you know, I thought it was all right. I'll give it a 7.5. It, it wasn't the greatest movie. It wasn't like, oh, man, this is the blockbuster hit we wanted. But it was good to finally have something out that I was anticipating. <laughs> now, Black Widow. Let's get Black Widow out there. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Subscribe if you haven't. I'll see you on the next one.